Mayor Block, that's very helpful. Thank you. Any other comments from the committee? Do we have any public comment on the Prop 98? Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair. Um, yes. As the third member of the subcommittee, I... Yes, Senator Morlock. If I could, Mr. Chair, um, one of the things... more of the second wheel, I think. Uh. <laughs> the, the, uh, the thing I said at a few of the meetings was uh, the, the reason for my no vote is that I support the governor's recommendation over staff recommendation, and that'll sort of be my reason for today's no vote. It's to say, hey, I, I actually preferred the Department of Finance's uh, proposal. Um, I am happy that the uh, community colleges are doing well in the career technical education area. I'm, I, I would have liked to have seen the glide down stop for CTE for K through 12. I'd like to see that ongoing in the future. Uh, I'm sorry that the 20 million uh, for the charter school startup funding was uh, deleted. And I'm concerned about the fact that the $100 million emergency fund uh, for school repairs has also been uh, removed. So uh, with that, Mr. Chair, uh, I'll be a no vote, but <clears throat> for the budget overall, um, the governor was very specific in saying that, you know, a few years out, if we forecast where revenues are going and where expenditures are going, the expense line crosses over and it does not look very positive. And we've been doing some analysis with data going 10 years out and it's even getting bleaker. Uh, so we need to start really being focused on how we manage our money today as we move forward because, um, you know, we've got a governor who's been very good about watching the budget, but he's only got two years left. The next governor is going to have an interesting uh, predicament to deal with if we don't pay attention now. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Morlock. Show of hands, please, for public comment. So close to 20, if you could keep your comments as succinct as possible. We want to be respectful of what you have to say. Please proceed. Anita Stromgren representing the Northern Directors Group, and we continue to be in strong support of the Legislative Women's Caucus ask. We were very disappointed in the positions that the Senate took and look forward to reviewing the agenda for the Assembly and hope that there can be some good discussion in conference committee to bring the numbers up. We know that and we've heard the research over and over again that the earliest years are the most important years. It's an investment in the future and we need to put more money into services for children and families. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron Gable, on behalf of First Five California, I'd like to align myself with my colleague and add uh, that we do appreciate the design of the Senate's investment. In limited revenue years, we do need to allocate first towards the per child appropriate funding amount. However, this is not a limited revenue year. And so with all due respect, we would hope that the Senate would reopen this package and look at how we can make our youngest children and the most impactful investment we can make in this budget year a much more significant per funding priority. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cable. Good afternoon, Donna Snaringer with the Child Care Alliance of Los Angeles. I agree with my colleagues that came before me and would also add that you are looking at a system as Senator Mitchell referenced that is starving. We are over 10 years, nearly 10 years behind on reimbursement rates, over 10 years behind on family eligibility levels, and the number of spaces for care that were approved in the alternative payment program, the 2,000 slots, represent less than 1% of the documented need in the state of California. We really need to do better, and we look forward to a robust conversation and appreciate the comments, particularly from Senator Mitchell. Thank you. Lola Cornish, California Child Care Resource and Referral Network. I'd like to mirror um, what all of my previous colleagues have said, but add additionally that even with an $800 million investment, the system is still grossly underfunded. There are hundreds of thousands of families on the wait list. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Jennifer Greppi with Parent Voices California, representing 15 chapters of Parent Voices across the state and thousands of families many of those on the childcare waiting list, uh, waiting and waiting and waiting for their turn. Um, I just wanna refer to um, in the, uh, there is $90 million sort of on the table, which would serve about 13,000 kids. These are federal funds that instead of using those funds to increase um, access to families, they were used to sort of backfill and 
uh, not spend them on new spaces. And so we just want to say those $90 million are there for those 13,000 kids that could be off the waiting list because of those dollars from the feds. And we've heard over and over how much early childhood is education. We call it that. It is early care and education. So it needs to be funded with education dollars. Prop 98 is where child care belongs. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Grappi. Monique Ramos on behalf of First 5 LA. First off, we'd like to thank Senator Mitchell for her comments and just say we continue to be in support of the Women's Caucus proposal and look forward to a robust conversation in conference committee. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ramos. Barbara Barron, I'm co-director of the California EDGE Coalition, a coalition of business, labor, and social justice organizations. And in these comments, I also represent the Campaign for College Opportunity. Both of our organizations uh, strongly support the Senate's proposal to focus um, the first year of the 30 million um, increased investment in basic skills on the remaining applications for the transformation program, but we also strongly urge that the ongoing funding for basic skills also focus on those high impact practices that research has proven really can move the needle um, for our basic skills students. We think we have a real opportunity to change uh, the, the conversation. Thanks. Thanks, Ms. Barron. Uh, good afternoon, Nina Boothy, California Child Development Administrators Association, and just want to say thank you to the committee for reopening this issue today and really starting to talk about the dialogue of the incredible importance of early care and education. Um, Senator Leno, to answer one of your questions about Prop 98, and is there some mechanism or some programs that are within this early childhood system that can be moved over? There's one very easy one. It's general child care. It's a Title V education program. It has the same exact requirements, the same child assessments, the same teacher qualifications, the same ratios as state preschool programs. The only difference is the time of day that the children are being served and the age of the child. And that is the only difference. They 100% have the same qualifications. They used to be in Prop 98, got moved out a couple of years ago. That could be a very easy shift. Really look forward to some of the ongoing conversations and thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, Khadija Alam Javed with the Advancement Project. Um, first of all, I do want to thank the Senate for rejecting the governor's block grant proposal. It's just a bad idea. Uh, frankly, we were disappointed with the $99 million uh, investment, uh, but we hope this conversation leads to uh, getting somewhere close to the Women's Caucus proposal of $800 million. Uh, we look forward to the discussion in the assembly side. Um, and I have to thank Senator Mitchell for her continued support on this issue. She makes my heart full. Uh, when she speaks on early care and education, um, she, you know, we really look forward to her leadership and making this um, happen. And there's a lot of funding um, in the general fund and Prop 98. Um, so we hope we can find creative ways to invest in early care and education programs. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Laura magnus -Dutter. I represent 4C of Sonoma County Community Child Care Council. I echo what everybody has said here before me, and I appreciate the comments about acknowledging that the, the funding is inadequate. Uh, we strongly support the budget asked from the Legislative Women's Council um, and um, would um, really appreciate some additional funding coming out of conference. So thank you very much. Thanks. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Patty Pruneuber from the Child Care Law Center. I won't uh, reiterate what you've always already heard, but I endorse those comments. I wanted to actually acknowledge um, Senators Allen, Mitchell, Block, Senator Leno, all of whom have said that this really needs to be revisited. And I appreciate that and understand that these are difficult choices, but we urge you to take that uh, careful look because this is inadequate. We are not budget experts, but we have looked at the budget um, for the call out to say where would the money come from, and I think that a couple have been named. Um, there has been a, about an $89.7 million supplantation of um, CCDBG money that has come in, and the general funds were reduced by that amount, uh, rather than using that increased CCDBG money to fund childcare slots. Um, uh, Ms. Boothy made the point about Prop 98, uh, that the LEA uh, administered programs are a, an absolute match for that uh, Prop 98 education funding. 
um, proposition to the rainy day fund. We know that it's important to fund the rainy day fund, but the extra $2 billion that has been stashed there by the governor should be looked at um, as a potential source. Uh, there's in addition 1.8 billion that was put into reserves uh, that also is should be on the table and we asked the Senate uh, to reopen this issue and adequately fund child care and use the legislative women's caucus uh, amount as a as a baseline thank you thank you hi good afternoon Kate Miller with children now and just appreciate you raising this issue today and second all my colleagues um, the child care issue um, just want to say that if we're going to think about economic downturn and you know being uh, preparing for the future, I think we really would encourage investing in the services that are going to help our lowest income families weather the storm and help keep providers' doors open so that people can keep working and children can get the services they need. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Mr. Chairman, members, Tim Fitzharris, Los Angeles Universal Preschool. First, I want to thank the the committee for rejecting the governor's proposal, which almost totally eliminates the private sector and mixed delivery process for the services. That's about a 30 year services. Secondly, I want to thank the chair and others who brought the 98 re reallocation, uh, rebenching. We think that's an important thing, particularly as Ms. Boothy po pointed out, this whole notion of Title V programs are educational programs, very critical. And thirdly, we support uh, Women's Caucus and others to get this thing up uh, in the conference committee. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the committee, Jeremy Smith here on behalf of the State Building and Construction Trades Council, also as a member of the Get Real Coalition, a coalition of business and labor and educators uh, advocating for more career technical education in our schools. I want to pick up on, on the mention of this career technical education incentive grant. Um, we've been advocating all spring to keep it at its current $400 million level, um, mainly because there was over $900 million in um, requests for this incentive grant. The demand is out there. Um, we are funding it because of this grant. We are measuring it because of this grant. Um, we, can, we can't require it because the A through G standards are already um, packed with requirements. But if you can fund it and you can measure it, um, you can hold schools accountable and um, meet the demand that has been shown to be out there. So I'd hope that you could also uh, look at this again if it gets the conference committee um, and, and keep it at the $400 million level right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Good afternoon, Sarah Lillis with Ed Voice. Uh, we wanted to thank the committee, the subcommittee. We are supportive of the uh, investment in uh, teacher residency pilot, as well as the investment in uh, ensuring that every child has an equitable opportunity to graduate high school ready for post-secondary education. I think that's an important investment. But we are supportive of the governor's uh, proposal for charter school startup grants and hope that that's an issue that can be re revisited. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Martha Alvarez on behalf of AXA, the Association of California School Administrators. We continue to support the governor's proposal and the Senate's proposal today to provide the ongoing funding for schools for K-12 through LCFF and one-time dollars to go in one-time discretionary dollars. Um, as you know, the legislature three years ago adopted LCFF, the local control funding formula, and through the LCAP requirements, the local control and accountability plans, school districts are developing programs locally, um, determining their local priorities, goals, services, and actions, and school districts are relying on the dollars coming through LCFF so that we can provide those funding um, sources to the school districts. Uh, for that, we support um, the governor and the legislature's uh, proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Albers. Nicole Rice, California Manufacturers and Technology Association, also a member of the Get Real Coalition. I want to associate and align myself with the comments made by Jeremy Smith from the Building Trades, and I also like to add um, that when the CT incentive grant came online, the expectation was that there were going to be changes made in policy so that there would continue to govern the, the um, expansion and, and maintenance of career tech education programs. Unfortunately, the program has only been online for one year. As Mr. Smith said, we saw $971 million in requests from locals, even though we have some very strong accountability measures in that program. And so the need is definitely out there. The policy, unfortunately, has not, has not changed. And that is what's missing behind maintaining career tech education, to have that policy driver. So until those policies change, the funding is really what's holding up these programs that are desperately needed for industries such as 
as manufacturing, our, our association's industry. We would have liked to have had a, a more robust conversation um, on this topic, but given the time and, and the, um, the budget calculations, we understand that that conversation couldn't take place at, at, as robustly and openly as we would have liked. So we would also uh, like to put in our request to see this issue go into conference so that we can have a discussion of whether or not it makes sense to maintain the uh, current $400 million um, investment in those programs. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rice. Dion Ariner, um, first I just want to make a personal comment. I wish I could channel Patty Siegel today. Um, for all of you that know, that knew Patty, um, first I want to thank Senator Mitchell and Senator Allen for your comments, right? Um, and also to Senator Block, I'd like to say I don't, I don't think that we have to pit ourselves against LCFF. I think that there's plenty of dollars in the state general fund and other places for us to look for in order to be able to make an appropriate appropriation for early childhood development. Now, on behalf of SEIU and AFSCME, and that's a separate statement, um, I want to align myself with all the remarks you heard earlier in regards to reopening this item um, and to ensure that as we go into conference that we can have a real discussion about the benefits um, to the state of California, let alone to the children and families that we're talking about. If we want to keep our economy moving, we need to be sure that these children get a, start, a right start at the right time, and that means from zero to five. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ariner. Before we close public comment, any others? All right. So we do have a motion from Senator Wolk to adopt the Senate Prop 98 package. Are there any other comments or questions from committee members? Mr. Chair? Yes. I just like to uh, say that I associate my comments with uh, Senator Mitchell's and I've uh, been a strong proponent for early childhood education for a long time. And it seems like every member that has spoken up, which seems to be a member, uh, a majority of, of this, uh, this committee, seem to embrace uh, the desire to, to increase this, this spending. Uh, we're the budget committee for the Senate. Um, and I feel embarrassed that we're sending a uh, figure uh, where the, the assembly seems to show they value childhood education more than we do here in the Senate. And uh, Mr. Chairman, you understand how this body works better than I do, but uh, why don't we just allocate more money uh, from this body? And it's going to go into uh, uh, discussions with, with the assembly, but let's, let's show that we're united in wanting to have childhood education as a part of our curriculum in the state of California. And the way you send that message is by associating a dollar amount with it. So I, I would welcome your recommendations on how we do that, but I think we as a body are, are, are pretty much unified, I think, and we should um, pick up this, uh, this inferior amount of money um, and support childhood education, early childhood education. It's an appropriate comment on which to conclude our debate, Senator Stone. So. Just to be clear, there's nothing that we could do here today other than what has come from budget subcommittee that wouldn't lead us to further discussion in conference committee. So we will be going to conference committee. Now, to the extent that we carry some shame that we're going to be funding to a lower level for early care and education than the assembly, I don't know all the details of their program, but I understand potentially some hundreds of millions of dollars are using some one-time general fund money. So I don't know that that's the fix that we're looking for. So clearly, I join everybody else. I started this conversation by saying, what is our game plan? We have a huge hole here. We have to figure out what steps we're gonna take sooner or later. And again, no one's doubting the value of this kind of early investment in our children. So we will be in conference. This will be continued. I think where we are at this moment is worthy of support to get it to conference and we take it up from there. So we do have a motion. Call the roll, please. Leno? Aye. Nielsen? Aye. Allen? Anderson? No. Bell? Bach? Aye. Glazer? Hancock? Mitchell? Monning, Aye. Morlock, no. Wynn, Pan, Pavley, Aye. Roth, Stone, no. Wolk. Nielsen, I don't know. Current vote is 7-5. We do have absent members, so we will leave that role open.
And as promised, we are going to take a 10-minute break. So very conveniently, we'll see you at 2 o'clock. <laughs>